So I'm just getting home and people keep asking me about what, how I'm ever going to like be able to give a child back if they get reunified with their family. And I wanna to talk to you guys about that and how it goes through my mind and thoughts. So let's get this thing started. All right, so let me get comfy. Ooh, I got this blanket here. This is a heated blanket that I got. My goodness. So Los Angeles does get cold. I know you guys think we don't get cold out here, but it does get cold. And this sucker is a heated blanket and it feels nice and warm and cozy. Anyway, so I'm gonna use this. Um, okay, so let's talk about this. This is, this is a serious thing, a serious topic. Um, and a lot of people ask me, well, Kevin, how are you going to handle having to give a child back that, that the court says they are able to be, um, you know, reunified with the family? And I'm like, okay, here's my response to that. First off, let's discuss reunification in general and, and the goal of foster care. The goal of foster care is to always reunify the child with the biological parents and or anyone in the biological family. So if the parents are unfit to have the children, the court system is gonna do everything and anything they can to make sure that that child is with some blood relative. May it be the brother or sister, or aunt or uncle, uncle um, grandparents, anywhere in the biological family. They wanna put the child with them. However, if they cannot do that, they will obviously bring kids to foster care, um, foster families. The court system will be looking for uh, biological family anywhere to take the child. So, cause you have to remember that the, the courts are always in favor of reunification. However, if they are unable to find biological family for the children or child that will take the children, then, um, you know, and the parents are not getting their act together or whatever it may be, they will then start the proceedings for adoption. And because you were fostering that child, you will have the right to adopt the child first. There. Now, people always ask me, my mom asked me, my aunt asked me, my brothers asked me, my cousins asked me, my friends asked me, Kevin, how in the world are you going to deal with giving a child back? Because there could be a situation where I go to the hospital and pick up a child from the hospital a couple days old and you know start raising that child and have that child for three weeks, three months, nine months, a year, two years, and someone in the biological family steps up and says, hey, I'm gonna take the child. And the courts will say, Kevin, you need to give that child up. We're going to reunify that child with the family. Here's my response to that. I fully understand that that is not going to be an easy thing to do. When you go and step into foster care, I think the people who become foster parents, resource parents, they also call it, you have to understand, you have to go in with it with a little bit of logic, I think. Logically, intellectually, I am capable of understanding that I most likely will have to give up some of the children I foster before I ever get to adopt a child. I, I'm aware of this. It's been drilled into me. It doesn't mean that emotionally, that was weird. It doesn't mean that emotionally I will be able to, that, that, that it will be easy to do. This is a child that I'm going to nurture, care for, love, parent. <laughs> and parenting a child, you don't, 
I don't care if they're biologically yours or not. You don't just give that child up and not have any emotional attachment to that child. I don't believe that it's going to be easy. However, life is not easy always. I look at it as if I don't do this, then I will never know. And if I even do it one time, if I foster one child and I have to give up that child and it is too emotionally traumatizing for me, I never have to do it again. I, I, maybe I've learned that this experience just is too intense for Kevin Gertis. But if I don't do it, how will I ever know? I don't believe that it'll be too intense for me. I, because for me, I fully understand I live, I like to live in the like in absolutes and black and white. And I don't enjoy the, the, the gray space of things. I don't enjoy the unknown. I, I, I fully understand that. It doesn't mean I don't live in the unknown and in the gray space sometimes because sometimes you have to that's called living and being an adult however i think i will be able to utilize the groups of people utilize the support systems i have to get through those periods of times when i've had to give the child back to the family and know that that child's no longer in my life and I think I will then, because I know myself, I can compartmentalize really well. I think I will then tap into the logical side of my brain and, and understand that this is part of the process. And when I can start to understand things, when I can start to put like the Lego blocks together, my, I, I find more ease and comfort in that. But when I'm like missing that puzzle piece or not sure of how this fits or things like that, that's when I get out of whack and I need like my tune up. So, and the last thing that I think is very important through this process and understanding about this part of the process, probably one of the most important and impactful things about this is that I, remind myself now, I think I will throughout the process, and if I ever have to give a child up, remind myself that all of the love, care, support, nurturing, parenting that I'm able to give that child while that child was with me is all of that that they've received. Children are not in foster care because they're being taken care of. They're not in foster care because they're getting the parenting that they need and deserve. They're in foster care because their family was not able to provide for them. So when I'm parenting a newborn and that newborn cries because whatever reason they're crying, they have a need that needs to be met and I was able to instantly meet that need for them, they are developing appropriately. They're learning appropriately the things that they need to be learning about when I cry, my needs get met. This is how I communicate as a child, as a baby. Well, when they're, you know, when they were in their other situations, that probably wasn't happening. So though reunification is a thing and it is real, and it will be difficult to go through even, you know, as the adult. I think that understanding that while that child was with me, it meant that they got all of the things that they wouldn't have gotten in their life if they were in their past situation. Now, granted, they're going to be going back to the family. So hopefully they are, hopefully the parents have gotten their act together. Hopefully they're with grandparents or, or family members that are stable and healthy for them to be with. Obviously the state wouldn't send the child back, but between all of that, between being able to think like an adult, use logic, use understanding and reason and, and know that this happens and understand that I was able to nurture and give the child what they needed while they were with me because they wouldn't have gotten it elsewise, otherwise, and understanding that like this is part of the process, 
I think that's what will get me through reunification and why I do something like this. And I also understand that I am a risk taker. I am someone who's always taken risk. I've came out to Los Angeles with four suitcases and knew one person that I hadn't seen, I think in six years at the time. It's just who I, who I am. Like I don't, I, I, I just take risk and I learn through experience. That's what I'm comfortable with. So that's that. That's how I feel about reunification. And I, I, I won't lie. Sometimes it does bother me when people ask me how I'll get through that or like, cause they'll ask it in a way it's like, Kevin, like, how can you, how can you do that? And it's like, it feels like a, not so much of a judgment, but like a second guess, like they're second guessing for me. And, and I don't need people to second guess for me. I just need you to support. Like I'm fully aware that reunif reunification is a thing and that it's not an easy thing to go through. Every foster parent I've ever spoken to has expressed how difficult it is. But that, why would we let that stop us, you know? So that's how I feel. I hope that helps um, people understand and I hope that people you know, better understand the process of reunification in the foster care system and what it's like for people. And granted, I haven't been through it yet. So I might do another video sometime telling you a whole different experience and hopefully it's a positive one. If you haven't checked out my blog on Milo Kids, you guys should do that. The link is in the description below. There's a blog I do every two weeks with them about this process. My podcast, LGBTQ Stories, has started back up. You guys can find that anywhere you listen to podcasts, but we're, we basically tell uh, narr narrative stories about the LGBTQ people. It is really beautiful, a lot of beautiful stories on there. There's over 250,000 downloads on iTunes and Spotify and the shows in 110 different countries. So you guys should definitely check that out. I'll put links in the description below. And then lastly, I am hosting an entire segment two times a month on the Gays With Kids channel here on YouTube where I interview a different uh, single gay identifying foster parent. Um, so that's really cool because I get to ask them questions, learn about their journey from all over the country. And we really spend a lot of time of educating people about the foster care system because I think most people in the foster care system know that it's really something that isn't talked about enough. And the more and more people that talk about foster care and how important of a process or how important of a thing it is, um, the more people in America that might want to take part in the process. So check out those things, but thanks for watching everyone. I cannot wait to do the video where I can say I got placed with a child and <laughs> you know, just can experience that with you guys and share that with you guys. So thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Thank you for the love and the support. Um, check out the links below. Bye.